Hi, everybody. Dorothy here, a professional astrologer. You can find me right here on the web, nhastrologer.com. There is a written forecast there, which contains a lot of details. Today, I'm going to talk about the week of June 8th. With everything I can remember, sometimes I say more here than I have in the forecast and vice versa. You guys know that. So uh, we, we're in between eclipses right now, and we just have a lot of important um, energies to pay attention to. So I'm recording this on the day of the first eclipse. We have three in a row. So we're just getting ready to really amp up our purpose and we can really move quickly in the energies that are happening right now. And so I like to address things on a personal way. You, most of you who know me or my regular followers know this. Um, I know what's going on in the world. My heart goes out. I'm involved. But here on these forecasts, I'm not a mundane astrologer. I want to give you information, no matter what your zodiac sign, give you the general information of what's going on with details, actually. That's my purpose in life, to give you the details about what's going on in this astrology book right here and how you can use it no matter what your zodiac sign. And if you want more details about how to use it with your chart, then you can study with me. You can come to my Patreon page. I have a lot of live interaction stuff on different levels there. So I hope you can join me there. If not, just sit back and listen, take notes, hit rewind, hit pause, whatever you want. And please share this in your groups. And um, if you have any questions, post them below wherever you happen to find this. So let's get started. I know that was a long intro today. June 8th. So we've, we're in the eclipses. We've had an eclipse on June 5th. We're going to see how that feels for you. Feel it, get into it, see what it feels like for you. The moon moved into the sign of Capricorn just a day later after this eclipse, right, on the 5th. And so starting on sun on Monday morning, the 8th, that moon's still in Capricorn. So throughout the weekend into Monday, that Capricorn moon is very logical, it's very practical, it's very grounded. It is just like, it's just somebody, you can feel that there is the need for those types of things, order and structure and some boundaries. There's the need for it. Now, in your own world, what does that look like to you? Maybe you just need to find and do something, find and do something that gives you a little more normalcy than what you've been feeling so far. And that's a piece of how we can use this energy in a positive way. Look at where that is in your own chart and you're able to get a little more information depending on the house placement and if it's connecting to other planets. But in the meantime, just know that moon in Capricorn is wanting us and showing us where we can let go of the chaos and bring in a little order into our lives. And again, I kind of squeezed in a little bit of last week, but I'm posting this on June 5th anyway, so you guys can all use it. So yeah, Saturday afternoon into Sunday, into Monday. And then the aspects that we have on Monday in the middle of the day, and again, early morning, depending on your time zone, here in the U.S., 11 a.m., I mean, here in the east coast of the U.S., 11 a.m., the moon makes its conjunction to Pluto, and then a little after 2 p.m., it makes its conjunction to Jupiter. So that will animate even more the, and show us even more the changes that need to happen. These are important times. Don't be stressed out when people, when us astrologers say that. Just know that the choices and the decisions and the things you're releasing and letting go and the things you're taking charge of, it's just very important. It's going to really set the stage for a lot of things moving forward in your life. And if something doesn't work out, don't worry about making the wrong decision because if things aren't in alignment with your highest best anyways, those things will go to the wayside. And when we're in between a full moon eclipse and a new moon eclipse, which we are as of June 5th, then we are mainly letting things go that are not in alignment with what we want and need now. So let me get the chart for that. Let me find it. Here we are. So here is the chart 
for Monday. This is later in the afternoon, well, midday. And the moon, you can see here, is just about to make its conjunction to Pluto. That's what it looks like in the astrology. If you don't know, that's no big deal. I'm showing you right here. This little guy is going to move forward. If I was to advance the chart to when, this is solar fire, by the way. If you would like to get it, I have a discount code. Just email me. I can get you a discount code, save you 15% or more on car insurance. <laughs> that sounds like progression. <laughs> but that is the discount. <laughs> I couldn't help it. That's good marketing, right? When you just in the middle of a sentence and you know their tagline flies out. All right, so here it is. Moon conjunct Pluto, moon conjunct Jupiter. So we're on a heightened awareness of the structures that are falling apart and the structures that aren't working. And so um, if that's overwhelming to you, and the moon's going to be in Pisces later this week, that's overwhelming to you, unplug, definitely need to unplug and put into place the things that you know feel secure and solid. So you're able to take you know, that inter those internal steps and external steps, do stuff that makes you feel solid, whatever that is to you. I can't tell you what that is. You have to look that for yourself or you'll know that for yourself. All right. So make sure you do that. This is anyways, this is just what it looks like astrologically. So I can stop the share on this one for now. All right, moving on to the next event. And this is the moon enters Aquarius late in the evening on Monday, and it remains in there all of Tuesday and all of Wednesday. So when the moon is in Aquarius, it's a little quirky, but it's also very analytical. It's fixed air. So our emotions, the moon, right? And how we emotionally respond to things, the moon, its filter is Aquarius now. So that means we have to filter that through Aquarius. And that is thinking mind. So what does this mean? Well, some of the negative pieces of this can be that we're overanalyzing things and we get stuck in our head so bad that we, we are frozen. We, we can't do anything. All right. And that can happen. And no matter how conscious you are, that can happen to all of us. We all slip into that. We are in such unique times that the stress levels, whether you think you have stress or not, everybody has a little stress going on somewhere based off of something. So when the moon is in Aquarius for these two and a half days, what happens is, again, we get into our head. So how can we work this? Now, if you're not a metaphysical person, then that's fine. But I mean, I will go and I'll walk and I'll chant because I'm a Gemini and um, the Gemini connections to Pisces has a lot to do with vocalizing so you can just get out of your head and just get into a present moment, right? So I do, I chant a lot. And so it helps me to get out of those things. And then, so it's a conscious action. Now you don't have to chant, but you could sing or hum because if you make that, if you make a voice a noise in your throat, when your head's going too much, then you're thinking about that. And then you're working your breath, right? And I know all of these things are air things, right? And so I want us to focus on that. So that moon in Aquarius, and of course, I won't go too deep. <laughs> Uranus is in Taurus, Taurus rules the throat. I did go deep. <laughs> I want us to think about this very mundanely if, if, you, if you choose. Sing, chant, get out of your head, become more conscious. And if you get stuck in that rat race that's in your head, then don't worry about it. Don't be mad at yourself. That Venus in retrograde in Gemini right now, we definitely, one of the main things is paying attention to that self-negative talk even the most slightest thing, like, oh, I should have done this and should have done that, or I should do this more often. None of that. Make a note, hit pause right now and make a note. It's like, all right, I'm going to pay attention to my negative self-talk and I'm going to shift it as soon as I recognize it. And when I recognize it, I'm not going to get mad at myself. I'm going to be fine. I'm just going to say, oh, look at that. I did that again. Okay. Whew back into your present moment, back into consciousness. This is how we can use this energy. It's different, it's unique, but this is how we can use what could be negative with that moon in Aquarius in a more positive moon in Aquarius way. So that will be, once again, late Monday night, again, depending on your time zone, all of Thursday, all of, oh no, all of Tuesday and all of Wednesday. So <clears throat> good for us, we got this, right? All right, I'm going to move on now to Thursday, the 11th. On that day, 
the sun will square Neptune. I'm going to talk about that in a minute with some other things. But the first thing is the moon enters Pisces, we hours of the morning before sunrise for all of us in the US. And so the moon in Pisces, we are now feeling overly sensitive, okay? We've gone from fixed air, Aquarius moon to the moon in Pisces, overly sensitive very sensitive actually, and it's hard to tell what's mine and what's yours and what's others, right? And it creates an overwhelming um, empathy for what's going on. And I'm not saying we shouldn't have that, but if it gets into your, if it gets too much in your energy body and you are overwhelmed with what's going on in the world, then you've gone too far. It's not good for you. So like I said earlier, unplug. So this is, again, we have this all of Thursday, let me put the calendar, Thursday and Friday and half of Saturday with that moon in Pisces, overly sensitive. So what can we do with this? You know, the energy of this is um, escapism and um, again, overwhelm. But what we can also do, the, a more positive way to use this is um, for compassion and sympathy and understanding. And again, if it's too sensitive to you, then do your best to unplug and treat yourself in a way that you need to treat yourself. Again, in between eclipses. So we're releasing lots of old emotions as well. And lots of things that really get stuck in our bodies, in our energy body, especially in the physical body even. So let me grab the chart for what I want to talk about next, I do believe, oops, I can't even see it because I have toolbars in the way, June 12th, here's June 12th. So one of the things that's going on June 12th and actually Thursday the 11th, the sun at that point squares um, Neptune. It already made it square to Mars earlier uh, before this forecast. And so on this, at this moment in time, this is when the sun, uh, the moon, conjuncts Mars and Neptune. All of this goes on on Friday, okay? And then on Saturday, that's when, the, when Mars and Neptune are exact. So what does all this mean? Squares the sun. What does all this mean? This gives us a major heightened sense of what's going on in the world, right? So um, let's see. Let me pause this share for a second. And stop the share. So with that being said, what we have is we have just the energy is with the moon in Pisces conjunct Mars conjunct Neptune, just looking at my book, so I get it straight with and and with the sun and making the square. Some of the negative pieces of this or the just the, the harsher pieces is a lot of misinformation coming to us. And people really trying to pull the wool over our eyes. Now, we know that happens regularly, and we're certainly very well aware of what's going on in the world right now. But when we have that, when it's conjunct, Mars and Neptune conjunct, and all of that going on, we can use this energy in a more positive way. Now, I'm not saying we shouldn't get out there and have our voices be heard. Absolutely. Go do what you feel comfortable doing. All right? Not everybody's an activist. Right? Everybody can do something in their own way if they choose to. Now, one of the conscious ways that we would, we would want to use some of these energies is like what I've already said, using your spiritual practices, meditating, creative writing, poetry, singing, take that introspection time, that reflection time. Because, you know, we still have Venus retrograde in Gemini, and her assignment is to, you know, clear up old misunderstandings, clear up old karma. And we have all of these things going on right now that are just so huge. You know, we have to bring it in to us. We have to bring it into here so we feel more in alignment with what's going on in our own lives because it's, it's rather, it can be rather overwhelming. So do that for yourself. Take your time this week from, especially with that moon in Pisces, in this waning phase to let go of old beliefs, clear the deck of things that just have not felt normal and right to you and move with that energy. And again, escapism is great. 
because sometimes we just need it. And so what does that mean? It means getting lost in movie weekend or have a couple movie night and, you know, well, some of us will drink a little more than others and some people will do the drugs and just that way of, of smoothing over those rough edges. That's all Pisces. That's all Neptune energy. So I'm not condoning abusing, <laughs> abusing drugs and alcohol, but some will. It's just the facts. But what, what do you do to smooth over your rough edges when, when things in your world, your family, our world gets to be too harsh? What do you do? right? So you have to decide what that looks like for you. I walk, I hum, like I said before, I chant, I'll meditate, I'll put on, you know, a solfeggio tone, whichever one I feel I want to work, which chakra I want to work on, you know, so do things like that. If those things are interesting for you, other people get out on the water, kayak, canoe, get out on a boat, things like that. All right. So there's lots of positive ways to use these energies. Now you can read this forecast right here, nhastrologer.com. Please share in your groups. I would love this channel to, you know, be everywhere. Of course I would. <laughs> Thank you guys very much. And um, please comment below. I always interact. I do my best to answer everybody who has questions. Don't post your birth information on YouTube. If you need to ask me something, private message, okay? It's your private information. It's not good to have that out in the, like that. So anyways, all right. Thank you very much, everybody. Very honored to be here. Very honored to continue to do my life path. And this is it. And all right. Yeah, I think that's it. Blessings. Namaste.